everyone, my name is Haley Edwards and today I'm going to be talking about child abuse. My general purpose is to persuade. My specific purpose is to persuade the audience that child protective service workers should have more protocols and more of a voice within their profession. My central idea is that child protective service workers respond to numerous amounts of child abuse cases and yet are only allowed to take certain actions and must limit these actions within these cases. Every year, more than 3.6 million referrals are made to child protection agencies involving more than 6.6 .6 million children. In the U.S., we have one of the worst records among industrialized nations, losing on average between four to seven children every day to child abuse and neglect. A report of child abuse is made every 10 seconds. Obviously, with these numbers, there's flaws within the child protective agencies and more should be done to help lower these numbers. My goal is to help you understand what more should be done and what problems need to be fixed within these systems and what protocols should be set in place. So let's begin by looking at how much of these cases are actually investigated. Yearly referrals to state child protective services involve 6.6 .6 million children, and yet only around 3.2 million of those children are subjected to an investigated report. I believe that every single one of these cases should be investigated because you can never be too sure with a child abuse case. More cases should be investigated yearly to help intervene with child abuse. Out of the 6.6 .6 million children, only half are investigated, leaving the other half of the children to live a life where child abuse is normalized. CPS workers should be more obligated to review these cases and should make it a protocol to investigate any case involving abuse. I believe that these children are suffering from abuse and every single case should be looked at because you never know whether or not it, the abuse can turn out to be deadly. Abuse cases should be taken more seriously whether or not they believe it is a phony claim or not, even though they believe that, you know, the person who is making the report may be untruthful about what is actually happening. Like I said before, you can never be too sure when it comes to abuse because the child's life is at stake. By ignoring these cases, the children who continue to suffer from abuse or neglect are put at more risk for mental related issues as well as sexual related issues. The mental related issues include intimate partner violence, alcoholism and drug abuse, early exposure to drugs and alcohol, depression and even suicide attempts. The sexual related issues include multiple sexual partners, higher risk for STDs, unintended pregnancies, early initiation and in sexual activities, and adolescent pregnancies and fetal death. So childhood abuse met the criteria for at least one psychological disorder. It's been proven that once these children reach the age of 21, they have at least already experienced one of these psychological disorders. So by intervening at a younger age, it will remove the majority of these possibilities and hope to give the children a better future and hopefully a longer life expectancy. So if a protocol is set in place to help intervene with these child abuse cases, these children have more of a hope of doing better and have a more successful future for themselves. As a CPS worker, as well as first responders or teachers, they should be required to learn to recognize signs of abuse in order to save five children that die every year from child abuse and neglect. I believe by getting more proper training, it will help to allow a higher success rate at saving these children. I also believe that there should be a protocol set in place to allow these social workers as well as teachers to go through a program to help better equip themselves to recognize the signs of abuse and to help refresh their memory in order to give these children a better outcome. A CPS worker should be allowed to have more of a say within their duties. So if they feel that the child needs to be removed from the situation immediately, I believe that they should be able to do so. So once a CPS case begins, the social worker has 45 days to investigate. But I believe that if it is the child is at risk high enough that the social worker shouldn't have to investigate for 45 days before they remove the child. 
I believe that a lot can happen within those 45 days that can be crucial for the child's life. So therefore, if the social worker feels the need to remove the child immediately from the situation, I believe that they should be able to do so. Teachers and first responders should also be allowed more jurisdiction in child abuse cases because the teachers are there for the majority of the day for the child. So therefore, I believe that the, the teachers should be able to have more of a say in what happens within these children's lives. So, you know, they could possibly be able to have a better relationship with the social worker in order to benefit this child's life. Almost half of all children who were confirmed as abused or neglected did not receive any follow-up assistance from CPS. This should not be okay and CPS workers should be held more accountable. These children were, for, were confirmed cases, therefore I believe they should have been removed from the situation to begin with in order to keep the child safe. And you know, they should have been removed from the situation from the beginning because it could have helped save their lives, it could have led to better outcomes, and yet these social workers failed them by not even checking in on them. So one of the things that is very flawed within the CPS system is that social delivery system places a higher priority on preservations of the family unit and rehabilitation of the offender other than focusing on the protection of the family and the child. So I believe that you know, I believe that people can change over time, but I think that if the child's life is in danger, they should be removed from the situation in order to protect them. Yeah, I believe that it is very important to keep a family together. However, I believe it is more important to keep that child safe. And many others are concerned about placing a child in foster home systems, but I believe that now in our generation, we are better equipped and we are more able to provide these children with better families if needed. And I believe that the children should be removed from the situation until the parents prove otherwise that they are capable of taking care of a child properly. And even when they do get their child back, I believe a protocol should be set in place that the CPS worker is allowed to do regular check-ins in order to make sure that the child is being safely taken care of. So let's review. Many children are let down every day because of the lack of protocols CPS workers have. By changing these protocols, it will help lower child abuse cases altogether as well as keep the children of our future protected. Within this presentation, I hope that I've changed your outlook on what needs to be changed within our Child Protective Services Agencies. Thank you.